Good evening. This is Street Talk, and I'm Father Russ Carmichael. And I hope we're going to have a good night tonight. I've got a great guest on. I'll tell you about my guest in a minute. Uh, it's a returning guest that we're very, very happy is on here. And sitting across me tonight, back, is our favorite friend and my co-host, uh, Dominic Cotton. Okay, he, he, he's back with me tonight. So, and uh, before I get into starting things, I do want to I want to say a couple of things. Obviously, I want to say hello to uh, Darren and Bobby out there. I know you're working hard and and keeping the house uh, under control. Uh, we've we've had some. Uh, uh, issues at, at home with some of the disabled at home, but uh, you guys got everything in control, and I know you uh, will take care of everything. The other thing I want to talk, say is thank you. Last week we had Zach Levy on, and uh, Zach uh, told all you people here in New London that worried, were worried he is not going to be working with the mayor as his campaign manager. So that was an exclusive here, and we're happy to uh, see that Zach's uh, staying out of that fray. Um, one of the other things I do want to say is uh, I want to say hello to Frank Schaefer. Frank Schaefer, for those of you who do not know, has a great uh, 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 situation with the Huffington Post. He has his blog. Frank is a, uh, well, he's the top, he's on the top of the New York bestseller list uh, with his book, uh, Why I Am uh, an Atheist, who believes in God. Uh, his father and uh, uh, Francis and Elizabeth Schaefer were his mother and father, uh, famous televangelists, nationally known. Uh, Frank's a wonderful guy, and uh, he's due to be on the show again. He was on with us about a year or so ago. He, he actually owes me two shows, so he should be on with us uh, hopefully as soon as we can catch him. He's running all around the country, but uh, if you're looking for a nice gift this uh, season, you should get his new book. And he's got a great article right now that's running at the, in, in the Huffington Post. So anybody who's on the computer and can uh, get to the Huffington Post, read uh, Frank's uh, latest article. It, it's a great article. And as usual, I want to make sure that we say we start our show off uh, with, uh, with our concern about Senator Andy Maynard. Uh, we love Andy. We've been a longtime friend of Andy's, and uh, uh, obviously everybody's prays for him. We know he's on the mend, and hopefully everybody's going to get out there and vote for him, keep him in office. We, we want that to happen. And, ag and again, most of you know we, uh, we favor Andy. He's been a friend for a long time. Uh, I used to come down the, uh, the kitchen at 6 o'clock in the morning and flip pancakes for all you people that have been homeless and stuff like that. So you know, you know Andy personally. We've known him for a lot of years. So I just want to say God bless you, Andy, and, and keep up the uh, good work. With that, because I'm talking about senators, I'm going to segue my guest tonight is Kathy Osten, back on the return to visit us. I'm yeah. so happy that Kathy's back with us. And of course, across sitting across from me is Dominic Cotton, who uh, goes out and deals with the Republican Party for our father because he can't talk to them because he's down a dirty Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them actually like him, too. <laughs> Oh, Kath, good nice to have to you. Oh, nice to have you back yeah. and everything yeah. else like that. So, you know, you know, how's the race going? What do you think? I think it's going great. Uh, we've, uh, I have a whole team of people that are working on the campaign, and uh, things are going great. We've contacted about 75,000, uh, had 75,000 contacts with voters um, over the last month and a half, two months, and we're raring to go, and we, um, you know, we have 11 days left, and we're real excited. Oh, that's great. That's great. And we're real happy. Ah, we got our favorite guy on the line. Let me, okay, we got Ray, we're being, you can't even, <laughs> you can't even get going. Hello, Ray. Hey, Father Ross. How you doing, Ray? Good, buddy. How you doing? All right. God bless you. I hope you're doing fine yeah, and everything. I have Senator Osten on, uh, okay? Do you, do you know the senator? Yeah. Yeah, she's great. Too bad you're not in her district. You can't vote for her. Uh, but you can get all your family out to vote for her, right? Yeah, I know it. I know it, too. Uh, he, uh, the gentleman, he's very nice. Dominic, you know Dominic. How you doing, Ray? It's good to see you again. Ray? 
<laughs> you know? How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Doing very well. Who's the young lady? I, Senator, it's, it's, it's Senator. Yeah, yeah, of course you know who it is, don't you? Hi, Cap. Hi. Yeah, I see Hi. You. Yeah, you know Cap. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Ray. You'll be a fresh guy, right? Get the family out to vote for her, okay? All right. Okay, love you, guy. Bobby okay, says hello. I'll talk to you later, okay? Bye-bye. Ray's loyal. <laughs> no matter what time we're on. No matter on. what time. He's always, he's great. We've known, known him a long, a very long time. Uh, okay. Uh, not to, uh, you know, to get right back, uh, because the race is important. I don't even know who you're running against. I don't, and I, I don't, you don't need to tell me his name. I don't, I, I, well, I, I haven't been telling anybody don't, his don't name. Don't tell me his name, because I, I well, can't believe this guy. They keep it a secret. Uh, uh, you, you know, I know you're out there. You're pounding a lot of doors, getting in contact yep. with a lot of people. Yeah, going uh, to events and meeting people and making sure that, and dealing with constituent issues and, you know, working really hard. Well, I, you know what, somebody really told... Hard. Somebody told me this guy told some, somebody just recently told me that he got up and was in a debate with you and said you didn't need uh, 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 certified uh, um, sheet metal sheet fabrication. fabrication people. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, wh what's wrong with that? I mean, well, <laughs> what, I, you know, I was really quite surprised. Were you surprised? I was. I was stunned because uh, he said that we didn't need to put money into training. Um, people to have jobs that were in sheet metal fabrication or precision manufacturing. And um, I said, you do, you know, I said to him, I said, excuse me, I said, uh, we do need this uh, because um, our manufacturers are asking for this. I said, you know, there is a small manufacturer located right down the road here. Uh, it's called Electric Boat. <laughs> No kidding. And uh, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're little. Gonna, they're going to be hiring a lot of people, and they want qualified people in sheet metal fabrication. And and uh, not only them, but uh, Collins and Jewel, uh, that was uh, used to be in Norwich, they've doubled their floor size. Uh, they are they're working not only locally with e with Electric Boat, but they're also working nationally and internationally with people. They need workers. They they also uh, added in another twenty workers in the last uh, couple of years. Um, looking for qualified workers, and uh, we're working really hard in the state to um, have to expand that manufacturing base. This is what, you know, and I want I, you to I, jump I, in, well, Dominic. I know we, okay. Uh, a couple of shows ago, we had uh, we had a couple a couple of representatives from that right. highway on, and they were they were talking. They were part of the uh, education committee, yep. and uh, the technical schools, and how they they have advanced manufacturing. Exactly right. Um, as 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 a, a staple part of uh, their curriculum. Correct, and, and they're that's... adding back in welding back into the Votech schools, and that's something that we've worked on, and that's because we have a need for welders, we have a need for sheet metal fabri fabricators, and we uh, have a uh, a huge need. We have manufacturing that's exploding. Uh, United Technologies, Pratt and Whitney. Mm -hmm. Electric boat, columns and jewels, which, all, which all these manufacturers all need these this kind of stuff, and and that, it's been a Republican thing that's really aggravating me because even Dan Malloy was talking about like we don't need this manufacturing is coming back here, yeah. qualified manufacturing, good manufacturing, uh, you, you know they used to the craftsman manufacturing, wage manufacturing. Yeah. and real good yeah real good wage stuff and 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 uh, and, and they're, they're denying that this is happening and it is it it's happening right now you know right. well we have the uh, I, the we had I was lucky enough to uh, meet Secretary Perez uh, from the Federal Department of Labor mm -hmm. and he was in town today and uh, uh, he came over to Collins and Jewel uh, a business that has expanded uh, and hired more workers and is the business that is uh, working with uh, electric boat locally um, works on a national level with uh, uh, goes all over the country and has been on an international basis also uh, they are uh, an excellent family based been in the business more than 50 years with their parents uh, and grandparents started the business they are just a wonderful wonderful company um, and Secretary Perez came, had a tour of uh, their new facility, got to see what we were working on in that area. Had uh, It was a great thing to see him there. And they have hired 
uh, through some of the grant funding that we have had with the Step Up program, one of the workers from the Fusion Paper Mill who had lost their job and she was thrilled to be there and was uh, helping out Collins and Jewel. Then we went over to Norwich Orthopedic with um, Secretary Perez, and you know the other one, the, another booming industry in Connecticut is the healthcare industry. Oh yeah, and absolutely. They're uh, looking for a new building. They they want to double the size at Norwich Orthopedic. They had just doubled the size about eight years ago when they moved into that building, and they thought they would never have to build another building, but they mm -hmm. need another whole building and are looking in the area uh, to establish another orthopedic group uh, and um, they uh, they need not only do they need the doctors for that second building but they're going to be hiring support staff for the doctors too uh, so uh, they're looking to again double in size and they work with a lot of the the doctors there had practices and had the ability to to use Lawrence and Memorial or Bacchus Hospital or some of the other surgical centers that are in the area right, to do right. some minor surgery right there, but uh, all of that's uh, very important for us because it's good living wage jobs. This, these are not, um, you know, and there's uh, nothing wrong with service industry jobs, but we want jobs that can support people yeah. and their families yeah. so that- Exactly uh, right, they, stable, they, stable, stable. Uh, okay, that you can Correct. financially take care of your kids, that you can. I, mean, I think this comes back to a lot of a lot of the governor's policies. Oh, I mean, oh I, yes. You know, I know, I know. Uh, everybody seems to want to hammer away at him for, <laughs> for certain things. Coming in, and the money that uh, United Technologies got yeah. down in our area. Right. How many manufacturing jobs that that supports right. around Sikorsky and, and Pratt and Whitney right. and all, all the other throughout the well, state? We don't want them to leave the area. No. We actually no. need them here. So whatever we have to do to keep a company here. And, and a lot of people talk about the grants that we give for businesses and they say we should lower their taxes. Well, if you're a manufacturer in the state of Connecticut, personal property is already not paid. Almost mm -hmm. all of a manufacturer's personal property is in quotes forgiven that we don't we don't charge them personal property taxes they pay some personal property for administrative things but not for the uh the mechanisms of the manufacturing right. plant and so that's one thing that uh has been codified it's been in the state for a while been codified under governor malloy's uh you know um umbrella of things that he's done for mm -hmm. businesses in the area um you know uh i'm never going to leave Connecticut. I love Connecticut. And I think it's a great place to be. So I think that we should start recognizing all the wonderful things wonderful that, good things that, are that we do. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. We have one of the best quality of life in the country. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have a great, we are, are, I think we're fourth in the nation on education. It's, you know, it's something that we should be extremely proud of. And I am proud of that. Uh, you know, my family grew up here in Connecticut. I grew up in Norwich, and um, it's one of the areas I get to um, represent, and I am just so excited about that. And we had a family business. I have uh, five sisters and a brother, and um, I have my, uh, I, I, I am a little prejudiced. I have my the four best grandchildren in the world that live right <laughs> I could get in an argument now. <laughs> you knew about that, but go ahead, right? Okay. But there, my oldest grandson is going to go to school to be an engineer. He is. Uh, he um, will go to college next year. I want. Uh, he is going to stay in the area because of the jobs and the you work that we're doing it. here. Exactly right. And that's exactly why I work so hard because I have family that I'd like to see stay here. And, uh, and constituents that I want to say. Oh, well, you know what? You basically you're saying the same thing. I, I came. Well, I'm I'm Newton. I'm a Boston kid, and and I come back here because my youngest went to the Coast Guard Academy. Right. She's serves. She's an officer right now and serving and stuff like that. But we've developed a business. My business is around healthcare, right. which is uh, and and people that know it's it's the the, the growth industry. Uh, in the United States right now, second to none, really, and because of all 
people like me who are getting old and need care and right. stuff like that. And we know that the growth of that is going to continue. And, and Connecticut's one of the best states if that's where you're going to live, okay, because uh, I happen to get serviced at Yale, okay, and I love my doctor. I got some of the best doctors in the world. And, and, and of course, I'm in the business of home health care, and that business is being developed for my my, my family is sa right. same thing. My my daughter that's the in in the Coast Guard will own own eventually own the uh, uh, the business. Uh, other family members will work and work in the family, and and you want to have a nice place to settle. Right. And they like ever since she come out here and did the academy, she loves this area. Uh, okay, now we've had family down here. It's not like it's not like we because right. we're New England people, but not her because she's from another, right. we were another part of the country. She loves this area. This is where she wants to settle and stuff like that. Well, we are growing to look at it and where we're growing. This is going to be a great place. It is a great place now, but it can be greater. Correct. We've got the rail Right, we've been situation. doing a lot of work on a rail. A lot of work on the rail. Yeah, you know, uh, um, Governor Malloy brought in uh, um, some uh, federal and state dollars to mm -hmm. uh, repair some of the rail. I started working on rail as for selectmen. I, I, I know. I know. So I rail is uh, I'm passionate that, about right? What's, um, right? freight rail in particular. Right. You know, I'm, I, I I love I love riding on a uh, on a train too, but um, I'm passionate about freight rail because uh, we have an excellent opportunity in southeastern Connecticut um, with the Port Authority that was established well, in the last legislative right, session exactly. and uh, we now will have the ability to take goods from the port and bring them all the way up to Canada uh, and working mm -hmm. on a regional basis um, by uh, working on the rail lines that we have so that now we can double stack cars from the port all the way up through an, and into Canada something that is and most people um, forget that Canada is our, is one of our number one trade partners. Trade partners, yeah. yeah, exactly yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, within 500 miles um, uh, of of this area, we have a lot of trade partners that we work directly with. A lot of exactly. uh, manufacturers. It's a it's an important thing to do is to upgrade our rail uh, and take care of that. And and several of the lines have been upgraded in between. Um, well, in between Lisbon and Willimantic and uh, down this way up through Norwich, and, and we're just starting. Right. You know, I, I talk a lot about um, freight rail is important and the Port Authority is important, but uh, people talk about roads and bridges uh, and how much we have to do, how much work we have to do on mm -hmm. roads and bridges. And I agree we have work to do, but has anybody gone any place where they haven't run into a construction site? Not lately. Lately. <laughs> lately. Every place <laughs> where we're going. Oh, we're working. It is. Exactly. Exactly. We're working, we're working on, on it. They're yeah, it is. working on it. We are working on it. Exactly. And so I, exactly right. I would yeah. like to remind you. Remind them. We're, we're doing it. Every single <laughs> day they go someplace, there is work being done on a road that you're traveling. You can't go on a state road now without running into some work being done and that took a while to get started but we are at we are making great strides, great strides. Great in strides. in our road uh, in our roads we have um, work to be done absolutely um, we never finish everything but it's the same thing in our own homes right we yeah. always it's we always something, something else to there's do. always something to do in, a, in infrastructure a, I think it's it, a big it's a big government difference it's, right is investing in these things versus flat funding. Correct. And for a number of years, um, you know, when we've had different governors in, in, in right. office, a lot of these things have just been flat funded and right. they've been and they've been ignored. And right. I know, you know, I give this governor a lot of credit because there were a lot of issues that have been left without being addressed for so right. many years. Uh, you know, right. in 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 healthcare and um, obviously in infrastructure well, and, education. And, and, and education. There is nothing and you could say the other night, okay, when he was on TV, Foley didn't show up. And he shouldn't have shown up. He's an empty suit, and he, yeah. he doesn't belong showing up. But Visconti, if I mm -hmm. announce that right, there was no way he could attack our governor in any way who he hasn't built on fixing some, whether it's education, yep. whether it was mental health, whether it was roads, whether it was waterway. There was no area 
that any place he went after him, the governor's already working on it. Correct. I mean, you got to be kidding. I, I mean, to, to not vote for Malloy would be the biggest mistake in, in, in all, all our team. And you're part of the big team Correct. that has worked Thank on you for all of that. that. I, I mean, that. Yeah, I mean, it's not just, it's not one person that does it, it's a team. No. It is, yeah, and okay. we work as a and, team. And it, it's worked as a team. In our area, this area, when I came here, this area was never affected. They, they left New London and all this area well, alone. for many no, years. For many, nobody many from years. The, from the governor's office came down here. We did no, not have... Nobody. Uh, this governor has come down here, and we right. have all looked at, uh, at, what, uh, at the area. Uh, I work with a lot of wonderful state representatives and state senators to mm -hmm. work on the area right. to make sure that we're providing what we need and education is one of those biggest things in norwich what we have done is brought millions of dollars of alliance funding yes. into norwich we've established magnet schools and we wow. have established um, uh, programs where our education system is improving on a, on a dramatic basis. Yeah, absolutely. And because we are right. actually funding it correctly right. uh, or getting to funding it correctly when we had ignored it for a number of years. And in Norwich, one of the, you know, we are a melting pot. I was lucky enough to be at a citizenship <laughs> um, a ceremony just, uh, just last night. And we had 25 new citizens that are, are now in Norwich that uh, that took the course and are now and, and took the oath. And our mm -hmm. wonderful um, melting pot of Norwich is the, is uh, now 25 new citizens richer. And they say, at least when I come to this country, I can vote. And I couldn't vote where I was. And I, I think that that is something that we have to remember: is that we have the ability to vote. And we have the ability to decide our future. And so I encourage people to get out and vote because it really, uh, you know, uh, I'm a, a veteran, a uh, U.S. Army veteran. And, uh, you know, I, I am so proud of the fact, I actually think it's a responsibility and, uh, and it's really something that we all should be doing. We should be getting out to vote. And every election is important, whether it's for local right. government or right. it's mm -hmm. for budgets or it's for ordinances or it's state elections or it's federal elections. Every single election has consequences and every single election is important to vote on. Oh, by the way, we have a ballot question on there that will change our Constitution mm -hmm. on elections and it will actually make elections much easier for people to participate in and I encourage people to vote yes on the constitutional question. I think it's extremely important for us to um, uh, have early voting so that people oh, are the okay. early voting and that's something I, that's I, going I, to be very very, very important, important. Yeah, and, yeah. and it was voted on twice by the legislature and has been put on the ballot and now the people get to decide whether we uh, you know that we accept the change in our in our constitution and allow the legislature to um, have early voting happen on a more widespread widespread fashion so I encourage people to remember. Uh, I that. know I face this with uh, with one of my neighbors that, that were elderly, and uh, you know, they w I went out and I grabbed them an absentee ballot so that they could they could do it. But you have to do that within a certain time. Right. Frame. You only have a trip. And time. and their their problem was they you know they can't walk right. into the polling place because yeah. it's just too much for yeah, them. Yeah. Correct. Or or the people that we work with that are that are disabled. Disabled. You have to right. that, that, that 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 um you know or, or people that are in in uh, in nursing homes. Everybody right. should have the opportunity to have their voice heard. Correct. And I think that the, that that's why this uh, this mechanism of early voting uh, and allowing us to change the constitution, which will establish the rules. I which which hasn't thing. been updated since since the 1800s. Correct. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those guys. I want, when you're born, you're registered. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. when you hit it, I want computers. I want you to be able to do it by computer any kind of way that you can find your way there. I mean, they can figure out this. Uh, this voter fraud stuff is minimal. In, in, in reality, if it happens, it's not like it was years ago and stuff like that. No, so there's no, a lot of ways for them to, to check, to in check everybody yep. and go know who you yep. are yep. and stuff like that. So, right. you know, and everybody should, well, they're afraid. 
certain segments of our population are afraid of if everybody voted. Right. The people vote. You, you, you well, know. I, I, I think the more people we get to vote, the better the off better we are. The better off we are. Yep. That's why I always send things right. to referendum as first selectmen, to, uh, you know, so that on the big issues, uh, everybody gets to vote. Uh, yeah. It's I, important. I, I uh, speaking of which, I, I know uh, uh, an issue that um, I know that was brought up to you last year um, that we actually ran into uh, uh, again this year. Oh. <laughs> is uh, <laughs> speaking of Notice. voting and, 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 and uh, getting an opportunity I, I to speak. Uh, yet again, we, we had a difficulty with uh, with um, a public hearing that uh, we had over uh, issues uh, relating to the to the brain injury waiver. Yep. And um, I think we had probably about a, a day, maybe a day and a half worth of notice yep. in order to be able to get people up to, to the legislature. And I know this is. An, an, an issue that uh, we wanted to work on, uh, certainly that was brought, brought up with you like last session, that, uh, you know, I, I find it strange. One of the issues that was on there uh, was about the change in uh, employment status uh, for a certain segment of, of this population. Um, I actually got notices from Allied Community Resources to my clients with the changes and what they had to do prior to it being voted on in the legislature to approve it. Right. Um, if they can do that, then I think it would be very easy for them to be able to put together a summary of any changes to any of the waiver programs. Because it's not just my, it's all all the programs that they should be able to have access to this. From DCF and D DSS? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that um, the, both, uh, you know, I've done a lot of work this last year revolving around DSS and DCF. And I mm -hmm. think that... Uh, they have to remember that they're dealing with real people. Yes. And I think that that's the biggest thing. And, and real people need notice on when they can be there. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, so I, I, I agree that there should be a way to come up with a mechanism on how we're doing uh, notices. That's one of the things that I'd like to see us um, actually work on uh, is to give not only the public the ability to come in mm -hmm. and see it, but also to give legislators the ability to digest information ahead of time oh, yeah, so that exactly you could right uh, yeah, yeah you need to so, know what's going uh, on it's actually nice to be able to read something before I, I know i mean a lot of times in committee it's like i see people and they're they're up there with right. public testimony right. going yes. you know before, right before right. like people are getting up uh, up to speak right yeah. Right. It's it's really difficult, and 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 obviously in the stuff we work with, it is extremely difficult. Client centered. I mean, we even never got the medical community to understand what that no. means yet. I mean, right. the fact <laughs> that it's true. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, when you when you understand that the client is the boss, they're not used to that. Right. It, it it used to be the other way around. Now it's upside down, and we're still we're educating people. It's so hard. I mean, it it, re it really is. But we we've got to we we've got to uh, take on that issue. We've got to we've got to iron that process out. Right. I mean, I didn't go. I wasn't able to go. He 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 went. He went for us and, and stuff like that. But I was extremely angry about it because we had talked about it and said, look. Yeah, you know, my my clients don't even know, you know, know about what's what's right. going on, and you're changing things, and uh, it's, it's like dropping on. They change the the independent living skills trainer. We just got notices that they're going to make them uh, 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 household employees. Household employees, and, and, and the ramifications for they some have of no stuff. idea what's going to happen. These yeah. people, now you're not you're not going to be able to tax deduct any of the things that you provided to your client. Mm -hmm. And people don't know, don't know that. Right. Uh, okay, well, just to give you an example, you take, and I know what he does too, you take your client out to dinner that they yeah. never were able to do, you bring them to the movies, you transport them back and forth to medical care. Okay, who's going to pay for that now? Right. Okay, now, as an independent, as an independent I can deduct that because right. it's a business expense. But as, uh, as a household employee, you can't. I can't. Yeah. I can't. So now you're either forced into working for an agency or, 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 or you suffer that, that cost. And, 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 and when caring for people, I, I look at when I'm caring for people, 
you know, what, what, what's taking them to the movies, you know, you know what right. I mean? You're getting paid, that, those individuals, especially the ones I deal with, that they, they, they have no financial uh, situation or where, where, yeah. wherewithal. There are others that have means that, okay, but the general ones that I work with directly and stuff, they do not have that kind of means. I know your people don't have that kind of means. Certainly so not. they can So how do they go to a movie? How do you right. go when a movie costs you twenty bucks now? Uh, yeah, you know, you have a oh, you have a silly? popcorn popcorn costs you ten bucks. bucks. Yeah, yeah. So it's thirty dollars for someone who's getting maybe nine hundred a month, maybe right. if they're lucky, and stuff like that. So if if you if the uh, employee can't help them do it or something like us, then who's going to provide that for them? I mean, I don't think anybody thought that through. Well, I, I think unfortunately this has uh, been a lingering issue and, and, and it was part of uh, the, the problems um, coming up uh, with the personal care attendants. And there's a lot of tax issues that go along with this that were, you know, that I know that I testified on um, having to do with unemployment and the fact that uh, if somebody decides to to fire somebody, you know, which is which is their right, right. as as um, that uh, the the other people that consumer. might yeah that, that the other people that might be working for them will have their their rate of pay lowered <laughs> because now their unemployment is 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 rate is going up right. be, based upon a, a claims experience, and um, it's, it's it, 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 it affects them. other people yeah. and then it affects their ability to be able to recruit right. people. Uh, we also brought up the issue of, of uh, workers' comp um, well, with uh, with this population. I, I know, uh, like I said, uh, uh, around the PCA, I, I guess they're supposed to have uh, a council that's supposed to come up with a way to be able to uh, to handle this because this Correct. has been a long-term issue. But now they've just changed over ILSTs to household employees. They're going to be in the same situation, which is what I kind of brought to, to uh, uh, the Appropriations and Human Services Committee was, you know, uh, people can only work 25 and three quarters hours when they're household employees, unless the consumer, who has, has no money in the first place, has purchases a worker's comp <laughs> policy <laughs> for the people to be able to work for, for 40 hours. Exactly right. Exactly. And, and it's... Yeah. You know, and, and again, they're going to have this the, the same set of circumstances yeah, that I if you do... Client, yeah, I happen to have clients that have the uh, work of its uh, However they get it, charity gives it to them. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but, what, what, you, yeah. Know, you know, and, and those are the difficulties, though, that we, we've got to work through, uh, you know, over, the, over this coming year. I mean, I don't, you know... And, Right, I think that's, that's why we need work. you back in there. Uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's my segue to get that in there. You, you, I, you know? I'm excited to get back in there. So you, there's you a know. lot of work to be done. Uh, you know, and on on a, both a traumatic brain injury um, for and uh, my constituents and the work and the work that is that is outlined for um, whether it's personal care attendance or some of the mm -hmm. other uh, work that we have to do to make sure that. These people who are working with disabled folks are able to um, actually have enough money to pay bills <laughs> and pay like to be them. able to see them appropriately paid and be covered under our labor laws that we have. So yeah. we want to make sure that we're, we're looking at that and not outpricing ourselves so that uh, people aren't getting the correct care that they need to be successful, as successful as, as uh, possible. Um, so, so uh, you know, I've been working on another piece of legislation. Have you heard about this no, one? No, go ahead. Uh -oh. Dyslexia. Yeah, I, yeah, I, you must have been reading my mind, right? Because I was just going to say, do you do know that I'm dyslexic, right? Well, you know, Not as bad as the governor. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, for the first time ever, I, I worked with a young woman that I met up in Hebron. Her son was dis her son is dyslexic, and she... Uh, she said, you know, we're not getting the right care that we need in the school mm -hmm. system. Uh, we have um, uh, kids that are, uh, are suffering from dyslexia and they're made to feel less than worthwhile as a result of their inability, their true inability to, um, to, uh, to read and they're being told it's their own fault when it's uh, because they have a, a, a neurobiological condition called dyslexia which uh, runs the spectrum you know right. some people are are it's just mild. very very mildly dyslexic it's, and some are severe. very severely right. dyslexic exactly right. so the, for the first time ever we have on the um, the IEP form 
uh, the, uh, a box that says special learning disability dyslexia as of January. And so we're going to start tracking dyslexia. We also put in some resources for new teachers to start getting uh, mm -hmm. to understand and be able to um, uh, recognize and assess students with dyslexia. And I'm part of a task force which was put together to explain to um, schools about the box on dyslexia and to come up with a definition of dyslexia. And uh, I just got from this young woman, who uh, her name is Allison Quirion, and she's done fabulous grassroots mm -hmm. work on, on this issue. She is the president of Decoding Dyslexia. It's a Facebook group. Oh, okay. um, it's a, and it's decoding dyslexia hyphen Connecticut because it's taking storm around the country because oh, this yeah. turns out to be one of those issues that many states have not dealt with correctly. Interestingly enough, Texas has been doing it for 30 some years, but New Jersey just passed um, this law and it's around, it's, it is taking the country by storm. And, um, you know, some people can work beyond the dyslexia, like, like yourself, like the governor, and there are some that don't. So um, I, I'm just super excited about coming up with this definition. Now, I think that uh, we're going to find out that this is one of those issues that was a sleeper issue that people did not realize how, how uh, much impact it's oh, going to yeah. have, oh, have yeah. on yeah. kids' oh, lives. Yeah. It certainly is. So both, I, I, both, of, both of us. You, I was just going to say, uh, you, I, I, Bobby. I'm spelling dyslexia uh, oh, my God. up until the time that they came around and I had one of the very first personal computers yep. with a... Uh, the Multimate, where they flashed the, they didn't tell you how to be able to spell check yeah. it, but they flashed the first letter of everything that was incorrect. Until I hit college, I hated going to school. Right. I hated school. I yeah. hated school. Right. I'm in the Newton school system. This sounds arrogant. I was supposed to have high, the highest IQ recorded at, at the time, and they all, I wasn't performing like I should, and especially English. I'm one of the only um, one of the only kids that graduated Newton High School without passing uh, high school English, the last class of high school English. My papers would come out, and you could see uh, they bleed I, red. I, 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 okay, <laughs> there would be a stack of papers, yep. and you'd see mm -hmm. mine in the right. middle, and mine looked like mm -hmm. blood yeah. Yeah. before you even see. So yeah. you know, and, and oh well, you, you would have got an A, except you can't write. Oh, you can't spell and you can't do this and everything. Right. Okay, I've been asked to author stuff I don't know how many times and everything else. My still, my fear is still when I have to have an editor when I work with right. people and everything else like that. I did like the governor my stuff orally, and, and, uh, and, and it's really it is really a tragedy. Some people can get by it with assistance. Correct. Okay, but if you don't have if you don't have the support support system, system or you're the people not. who understand it, you're 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 in serious trouble. Or, correct. Or, or you lead into so, the situation of what your former career was. Well, which and that's is what I was gonna, That's what I was yeah, going to say. Yeah, As yeah. I, um, I talked with exactly, um, right. Commissioner Zarenda. He uh, uh, just left to go to New yeah. York, um, but he. Um, he and I were talking about a completely different subject. Uh, I was asking him what was going on with Northern Correctional Institution and their downsizing Northern and changing around some of the mechanisms that they're mm -hmm. dealing with. And I said, what are you doing with your problematic inmates? He said, well, we're, making an we're having each one of them assessed and seeing what are the commonalities between them. And to a person, they uh, had either dyslexia or autism of, course. of their problematic a very angry um, mm -hmm. people, and I, I am by no means saying that uh, people with dyslexia or no, autism no. end up in prison. I'm just saying that people that have problems in prison tend to uh, have these two conditions, which were uh, either not diagnosed as um, as a in, as a, in a, child, as a in child, child and stuff or, like that. Wow. Or or inappropriately treated and created a whole host of problems for those. Of those people moving forward to include some anger management issues and some other things because people were not able to either understand them or help them through their issues. And many of these people were being are and are being manipulated to act out and maybe mm -hmm. have somebody else that's behind the scenes uh, that that's pushing them into this. And so um, I think it's uh, this particular issue this uh, of us coming up with a definition of dyslexia and, and uh, moving forward uh, and coming up with uh, an in the future 
My, uh, my goal is to uh, have um, current teachers and, uh, and new teachers have the appropriate assessment tools and have evidence-based um, uh, uh, teaching skills that will allow us to um, uh, uh, reprogram uh, through phonetics generally uh, it, uh, the ability for children to read correctly and spell mm -hmm. correctly, and I, I, I'm, I am very excited about that piece oh, it's of gotta, legislation. It's got to be it wonderful. It really feels oh, wow. great uh, to work with somebody that, uh, as a grassroots person, this young woman from Hebron, and I think I told her I said you will be the uh, the one person that has made this biggest difference. And you know, we passed that piece of legislation. It went through. Um, and it passed the House and the Senate in, within 24 hours and was signed by the governor. We're so excited. Oh, that's so, that's so good. And, and I would happen to say, in, in, in prison, I, I, I would guess at least 65% of all the men, and oh, I, I, I won't say women because I was in the women, uh, have some form of uh, educational uh, problem uh, that was early childhood and mm -hmm. led to the anger situation that you have, the frustration yep. and everything mm -hmm. else. I, I would say that from as an ex-convict. And, and, and uh, I know that if I did not have the opportunity of education, well, I graduated Newton High School. I, 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 was, I wasn't, I had the family and the people and the support to do, uh, to get through and do that and started called, then I dropped out or whatever. But, if I did not have the opportunity when I was in prison, I was part of a, a Spiegel program, a, a STEP program that brought in college into the right. institution. Mm -hmm. and, and if uh, if Mrs. Spiegel from Spiegel Catalog, uh, okay, did not sponsor us, God knows where I would have been, and because education, I believe education mm -hmm. is the key to any rehabilitation and right. stuff like that. And the earlier you can catch somebody that has difficulty in the education process and you can identify that right. and deal with that, the better person you have at the out, outside of that. I totally believe in that. Uh, I, I'm I agree with you 100% uh, on that. And uh, right. I think that um, you know. um, pre-K is uh, yeah. vitally important. Mm -hmm. exactly. uh, it's extremely important for us to have uh, um, uh, a uh, teaching force that's well educated and provided the correct tools and and the right classroom sizes are also important. Uh, I, so I, I was so excited about that and I'm really been uh, thrilled to work with Allison and with um, the State it's Department of Ed on on oh, uh, yeah, defining dyslexia. <clears throat> and I think we can see some good work and so that's um, going to be one of my top priorities again next year. Well, I, I think that's so good because and and I think as you go into next year because it segues right into corrections that you're talking mm -hmm. about and we're talking about the sentencing stuff that we're dealing with. Yeah. Uh, okay, it's not only dealing with the sentencing for a, a life. Uh, uh, Juvenile. Juveniles. 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 They've got the life yeah. sentencing uh, under, under the Millis things and, yeah. and, and, and that. But you need a program in the institutions that can identify improvement. Right. And, and, and what you're talking about segues right into that type right. of thing, uh, okay? They, they, you, you would, we will be able to figure out if those right. juveniles have had those kind of problems and can surmount those things and, 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 and be able to change. Correct. And I mean, that, that's really all of that fits. Right. Well, um, I've also been meeting with the Youth Services Bureau, with the Youth Services bureaus, <laughs> uh, because we're looking to expand youth service bureaus, uh, in particular in northeastern Connecticut, where there's a, a dearth of youth service bureaus in that area, or at least um, programming that is um, very helpful for those uh, mm -hmm. those kids that um, that need that that youth service bureau, um, very special. Um, you know, focused attention, and I've been working with a number of groups on on looking to expand uh, and promote uh, youth service bureaus up in the northeastern corridor, uh, in part because uh, I think that uh, I think that you they're such a vital piece um, to the puzzle. But uh, I'm also one of the other pieces of legislation that I worked on this last year was. Um, Aaron's Law and yeah. it's providing oh, yeah. a sex abuse it's prevention sex abuse pro prevention. program yeah. 
And I think that, you know, in southeastern and northeastern Connecticut, there's this problem that is, uh, that we really need to deal with, and that's sex abuse prevention. And, and I think that, um, you know, that's my number one uh, issue, personal issue. I had family that was abused, and I think it's an awful thing to go through. Uh, and you need to do whatever you can to protect children and seniors, and I'm working on the senior safety zone. So years ago, I worked on Megan's Law, and this year we added another tool to the box, and that was with um, Aaron's Law. And um, I'm excited about it. Uh, but I'll let you in on a little secret. We're also working the whole legislative uh, delegation has a meeting coming up with both parole and probation um, on, uh, on the uh, housing of sex offenders with some of the REACH programs and some of the reentry mm -hmm. programs. So we're not taking over good residential turf uh, for temporary housing. For temporary housing. I, right. I happen to agree with all that kind of stuff, and I think you have to you, you have to really analyze where you're putting people, what you're doing with them, and stuff like that. Correct. Uh, it, it's a really important issue to me, especially for being there. I right. mean, I, uh, you, you, you know, I, I've, uh, I've had the experience of uh, being in there for a certain amount of time because of my stupidity as a young well, I think that we, but, but, but I think you know, we got to do something. We you, can't. You can't. You can't. You can't ignore problems. You can't ignore and wish them, them gotta, away. No, exactly. They don't go anyway. Them. We got to. No. We got to no. face them. So we're we're looking at that. We're trying to uh, trying to figure it out. We're also going to come up with, um, uh, um, or at least we're going to recommend. And again, it's the legislative delegation. Uh, the, it happens to be something that I'm extremely passionate about, but. Uh, we're going to look at um, changing the sex offender registry a, a bit and coming up with a tiered system and putting more information on the sex offender registry so people will um, know where they stand. Well, with yeah, with who they so, are so the exactly. fear factor doesn't Ex get in there Correct. and everything else. So like they'll that. have a better <clears throat> understanding of, of some of we, we so. have We have an individual that we work with and obviously he's on the sex offender registration has been ostracized all his life in New London, has been abused and stuff like that. And the fact of the matter was, he, he was not what people think it was a child molest. I had nothing to do with it. It was a gay situation. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, he's been on my show, so this is nothing uh, yeah. that uh, my audience doesn't know. And the tragedy was, it was more like a gay domestic situation. Yeah. And mm -hmm. at the time, in those years, 25, 30 years ago, it was a horrible thing to be gay, and especially for Italians, uh, okay, so they, they didn't deal with it properly, mm -hmm. and he got tracked into a wrong system and, and, and had problems, and he's, he's, been per, he's been persecuted all his life due, due, to, that, due to that fact. Right. Yeah, no, and, and that's tragic. It, where, what you're talking about, where you can um, define those things so that people are not so much afraid of what things are oh, and can right. understand because it's it, obviously it's a sickness it's a, it's it's a it's a different thing than um, well, I think that you know, I, I'm not giving anybody a pass. No, no, I, no, I, I, no, I don't, no, I don't. I don't give anybody a pass, no. but I do think that. Um, that we have to provide people with information. Yeah, right. And I think having information makes you less afraid, not more afraid. Not more afraid, and right. I, and I think that you need to know where you stand. And, you, and you know, um, I've, I, I'm very proud of working on the sex offender registry and getting that um, uh, through so that people could have the information. Because years ago, uh, before we had the sex offender registry, we had sex offenders. Uh, that's not a new thing, but we didn't know who they were they had or no where, idea they were. where they were. Right. And so we would have people that were never appropriately identified. Right. So since we've developed the sex offender registry, we've done a better job of arresting and convicting uh -huh. sex offenders and providing children and uh, and you know predominantly women with the ability to know if they were in an area that what that they had to be extra vigilant right. and mm -hmm. protect themselves. So um, I think that that's a, a very good thing. That, and, I, and I take great credit in having arrested and convicted more sex offenders. And <laughs> 20 years ago, it wasn't a felony to molest the child. Uh, no, it wasn't. And, and, and so it, it's exactly. I'm, I'm pleased about yeah, that. Does it mean that we don't have to do more work on it? And I want to provide more tools 
So I'm working on uh, senior safety zones and Aaron's Law is now law. And uh, I um, was so honored. I, I, the Connecticut Sexual Assault Crisis Center um, honored me with a letter saying that uh, I was one of their heroes for dealing with this particular issue. And I deal with it straight on without emotion and uh, just as a very factual thing to provide public safety and protection mm -hmm. for children and women, and I'm proud to do so. Absolutely, absolutely. We, we uh, absolutely totally agree on where you're going and what you've done with it, what, what that. Uh, obviously, the father of an army. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, with uh, eight girls, I, uh, you know, you need to have them protected. Correct. And, 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 and there's nothing wrong with, uh, again, protection, information, uh, that's good and and honest and straight out there, and that's how you gotta. Right. Uh, that's exactly. how you gotta deal with it. Absolutely, my goodness, I did I get that right? Did that five minute shot go up there? Just yes, it did. My God, you know, <laughs> we get you. Huh? We, we could talk all night. You know? I know we've got I, a lot to talk about. <laughs> we've got a lot to talk about. You've done a lot. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, as I, a new legislator, I, I, I oh, you know, I, I love to have worked with well, I don't you. Think you're, I don't think you're so, completely new. And, you, you've yeah. also run Sprague for how long? Yeah, yeah. yeah I was just going to say. You, you, <laughs> so you, it's, it's yeah, not yeah, like you don't have that you, management, you management uh, skill uh, 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 on top of this. Exactly, exactly right. <laughs> and and your, wor your work is well known. Uh, okay. And of course, uh, my bias my bias is the dyslexia or stuff that you've worked with and everything else because of how much it is really. It, it really hurt me and probably led to my part, part of the things that led to my do, uh, you know, going the wrong I, way. I, I do know if you do get a chance to talk to, to the commissioner uh, uh, for, for the, for the for, um, Department of Corrections, um, I know uh, 10, 10, 15 years ago I worked with a, a gentleman, Dan Banish, and he was uh, working on uh, brain injury uh -huh. within the uh, Department of Corrections. I think that somehow has uh, slid under the table, and that is hey, that's certainly issue. A, a, a major issue, issue we gotta, we um, issue within right? that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, we need yeah. it back in. Yes. Okay. So we, 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 we give we got all these things here. <laughs> 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 right. My whole agenda. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I only got four minutes. I, I, I want you to, yeah, uh, you, you know, your audience is out there. We co we're covering in your area and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, you, you know, so I, I just you want to talk. I, I want to tell you that it's not just about the issues no. on on the human services side. I, you know, I'm passionate about the issues my constituents bring to me, uh, but I'm extremely frugal. So I want to make sure that, that we're um, passing good budgets, that we're meeting our obligations. I've ensured for the last two years that we've paid the actuarial payments on our state employee re, um, pension uh, by 2025, which is actually not that far away, 11 wow, years. Yeah, wow. uh, we'll be fully funded. Uh, that means at the 80% level, that's a, that's a wonderful thing. We want to make sure that we're meeting our obligations and that we're, and we're looking at that. Uh, as a Sprague for Selectman, I decreased our unfunded pension liability by half. And, um, and I plan on doing that same thing as a legislator and working on uh, governmental issues. Uh, in the budget on the Sprague side, I brought us down to the 0506 spending level on the general government side. We needed to put more money into education. We have. And uh, we did some infrastructure work, uh, so we were able to trim in one area to accommodate those other things, and that's the sort of leadership that I plan on bringing into the General Assembly um, to look at all issues to make sure that um, we're being frugal. Uh, I, I think that you have to be. Uh, um, as a matter of fact, one of my Republican counterparts said I was like a swamp Yankee, so I took it as a <laughs> I'm okay with that. That's all right. And, yeah, okay. and, I, and, I, and I think that you have to do that sort of thing. You have to pay attention. He's demonstrating his appreciation for you. <laughs> I was, I, I'm okay with that. You know, I, 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 I like um, somebody that knows that I'm going to think about it before I just blindly uh, pass yes. uh, something along. I, I am, I'm, I am going to vote for uh, funds for um, education, and I'm going to vote for funds for uh, infrastructure improvements and for the safety net. I, I think we need those. Uh, those are important pieces. We are a community, and I care about we the community to, aspect. Gotta, but I'm going to make sure that we're looking at things with a, a, a very uh, um, 
uh, sharp mind's eye that, that looks at how we're spending the dollars because I don't want people to move out of Connecticut. I want people to stay here. I'm not moving. I love Connecticut. I'm not going anywhere. I have those four grandchildren, the best in the world, <laughs> just from my perspective. Well, from your perspective. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Grandpa will say, God bless you. <laughs> okay, you got to get out and vote for Kathy. Okay, you got to get out to vote, period. Uh, okay, we want you to vote for Kathy, but you got to get out and vote, and that's the important thing. This is a year, everything is important. My God, Dominic, bless you. Okay, Kathy, okay, Thank love you. to have you on, going to have you back in again when you're reelected, okay? Thank you. You got to come back. God bless. <laughs> okay. See you next Thanks. week. Okay, love you people.